Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 5.30. Tuesday night's tornadoes led to a special delivery for Harrison County Post Office, a bus full of school children. Lexington police say he was murdered and now friends and family want answers about 36-year-old Darnell Bates' death. Funeral arrangements have been set for a man killed in a car crash during Tuesday's storms. WKYT News at 5.30 starts now. We're continuing to track a breaking news alert out of Whitley County tonight. Sheriff's deputies are searching for a hit and run driver who caused a school bus crash. Deputies say someone crashed into the bus head on along Junior Roland Road and then left that scene. Four children were on the bus at the time, but no one was hurt. Police say they are searching for the driver of the Mitsubishi Eclipse. We'll continue to bring you updates as we learn more. The cleanup continues after Tuesday's tornado outbreak rocked many communities in central Kentucky. Kentucky. The National Weather Service now confirming nine tornadoes touched down in the bluegrass. One of the hardest hit areas was Harrison County, where school buses were taking students home when the tornado hit. Leaders tell us the bus drivers did their best to keep children safe. Victor Puente tells us how the community opened up their homes and businesses to help. He has our top story at 530. At the post office here in Barrie, they're used to taking in packages. But Tuesday night, they had a different type of delivery as a busload of children were dropped off to wait out the storm. School officials say classes let out at 310, but within an hour, many of those children were trying to get back inside a building. Then we heard the dispatch out front, and all of a sudden, my all lobby was full of children. <laughs> Janice Ignatovich had closed up the post office, but just after four, she found herself in the middle of dozens of children. Nobody was, seemed to be scared or anything. I mean, it was just all a small community staying together. And the school's media specialist says the bus drivers in charge of those kids did what they were supposed to. They've done a really good job of it, of contacting people along their routes that they know, that they trust, that they can take and, and get the kids to safety with. And that's what they did. Multiple drivers sought shelter. Some stopped at a country store. One was at the post office and others went to homes along their route. They were pretty spread out, um, and Cynthia is in the southern part of the county, so most of our buses were up north. Despite how many buses they had on the road, and with a tornado touchdown, Richie says the whole evening was as smooth as it could have been. One bad mistake could have been a tragedy, and we had nothing happen. The kids at this post office were here for around two hours, but eventually they were loaded back up and taken home, even if it was a little later than normal. In Harrison County, Victor Puente, WKYT. The EF1 tornado that hit three miles southwest of Cynthiana also destroyed three barns. Well, we hope you enjoyed yesterday's dry weather because it was certainly short-lived. More rounds of showers and thunderstorms are rolling into the bluegrass, kicking off what is going to be a very wet weekend. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is tracking those storm chances for us. How about it, Chris? Yeah, Amber, we had some stuff out there a little earlier in the day, but if you're heading out for those evening plans on this Thursday, a lot of that is drying up. But that's a short-term dry-up. We're going to soak it up a little later tonight into tomorrow. A little look outside now with our live sky cam. Hint of some sunshine showing up on the western horizon as some clouds show up beyond Defender here on that northern skyline. If you're out this evening, there's a chance for a shower. Most areas, though, should stay dry. Temperatures in the 60s will wind up into the upper 50s to low 60s by around 11 o'clock. Live first alert Defender. Steady rains to our north today. Rounds of showers and thunderstorms across southern Kentucky. So it was mainly the old squeeze play across Interstate 64 with a, not a whole lot of action. Those rains across southeastern Kentucky can continue to scoot away. Look at our clearing now that is to the north of Bowling Green. That is what is sliding in here. That should give us a very nice sunset from the bluegrass region point south and west. But let's soak that up because here we go again. More thunderstorms across parts of Missouri. Those are rolling in from west to east and that's what we'll contend with as we go into your Friday. We'll come back in a little bit and put some rainfall numbers on what to expect through the weekend. Tonight, family and friends will honor a father who's the victim of Lexington's latest homicide. Police say two masked men shot and killed Darnell Bates inside his Addy Alley home last weekend. WKYT's Jerrica Insco shows us how those who knew Bates are preparing to say goodbye. Four days later, and the family and friends still want answers about a man who police say was murdered here in Lexington. The 36-year-old worked at the car wash behind me and was a father of two. Tonight, people are gathering to honor and remember him. 
36 year old Darnell Bates was promoted to general manager here at Goo Goo Car Wash two weeks ago after working here for five years. But a home invasion early Sunday morning cut his life and career short when Lexington police say two masked men entered his home. After putting up a fight, Bates was shot and killed in the back. Only a few days later, the reality that Bates is gone still doesn't seem real to those who worked with him. For many who knew Bates, tonight is about closure. It was just a time of mourning for, for Darnell, which everybody just wants to get together for the last time. Just talk about Darnell, all the good times we had with him. And, you know, just, just, just be together. You know, be one right now. I know everybody's trying to lean on each other right now. Now that vigil for Darnell Bates is scheduled to start here at Goo Goo Car Wash tonight at 8 p.m. In Lexington, Jerrica Insco, WKYT. A fund is set up at the car wash to help Bates' mother and daughter pay for his funeral costs. Today, the director of the FBI met with law enforcement officials in Louisville to talk about what he says is the greatest threat to the U.S., ISIS. James Comey wants people to know what the Federal Bureau of Investigation is all about and how taxpayer dollars are being spent to protect America. Americans are much safer today than they were before 9-11, right? A lot of your tax dollars have been spent trying to make you safer, and we have accomplished that. Since he has been in office, James Comey has visited 51 of the 56 FBI offices in the U.S. Funeral arrangements have been set for a man who died in a crash earlier this week during the storms. Our county-by-county county coverage begins in Scott County. 29-year-old Corey Wilcoxon was in the car with his daughter Tuesday. Police say Wilcoxon crossed the center line of Stamping Ground Road during a heavy rainstorm and hit another car head-on. Wilcoxon and two other people died at the scene. Wilcoxon's visitation and funeral will begin at noon Monday at the Georgetown Cemetery. In Garrett County, police arrest someone they believe is responsible for a string of car break-ins. Police in Lancaster say the reports started coming in Tuesday night. Now they're asking anyone who might have been a victim in those break-ins to call police. Police are also reminding people to remove all valuables from their vehicles. In Shelby County, an audit reveals new information about some unlawful activity in the schools. The audit found a former payroll manager stole nearly $600,000 from Shelby County schools. The payroll manager was indicted in August on eight counts of unlawful taking. She pleaded not guilty last month. The audit will now be sent to Kentucky State Police and the Shelby County Commonwealth's attorney. Lexington is becoming more bike friendly with new bike lanes. So our good question tonight is from Carol of Lexington. She says Hayes Boulevard, which connects Richmond Road and Todd's Road, has bicycle lanes on both the east and westbound lanes, which are clearly marked by signs. These lanes are not wide enough or intended for cars, but they are continually parked along the edge of the road. This creates a hazard. Well, Lexington Police spokeswoman Sherelle Roberts says it is illegal to be parked on the traffic portion of the road, which includes the bike lanes. The solid white line near the bike lane indicates the primary roadway boundary. If a car parks on the edge of the road in the bike lane, their car actually extends over the solid white line and into the primary roadway. This is illegal and we will respond to complaints, she says. Robert says South Point Drive and Clay's Mill are other examples with bike lanes. She says no parking signs are not posted there because parking on the traveled part of the road should be an obvious violation. She says if problems persist, more signs may be necessary. Bottom line, though, if a car is parked in a bike lane, call police to report it. And if you have a good question, all you have to do is go to WKYT.com. Hazardous materials around your home, you'll soon have a chance to get rid of them. Coming up, we'll tell you how Lexington Waste Management is taking those items. It's a trend making its way to cities across the country. We'll tell you about a new report that shows food trucks are gaining in popularity. And coming up at 6, we'll take you to Bourbon County, where people are still cleaning up from Tuesday's tornado outbreak.
couple of you are looking to clean out your cabinets, the garage, maybe mm -hmm. listen to this. The Fall Hall here in Lexington gives you the chance to clean out some old hazardous waste. Next weekend, Lexington Waste Management workers will take items such as motor oil, weed killer, and antifreeze. You're not allowed to throw those materials in normal trash or recycle bins because they can be harmful to the environment. We're on tap for about $149,000 just for the disposal of those items. But, you know, you, the, the things about, you know, keeping out of our stormwater and all the, the abatement issues that we have, that, that's an immeasurable cost to us. The fall hall is next Saturday from 8.30 a.m. until 4 p.m. at the old landfill site on Old Frankfurt Pike. It's a trend that's rolling into cities across America. Lexington has several popular food trucks in town. Gourmet food trucks started a few years ago and have grown rapidly with the help of social media. As Chris Van Cleve explains, food truck operators are cashing in by making dishes that don't break the bank. It has all the looks of a restaurant kitchen, but it's on wheels. We're making uh, bifteki. Costas Plagos, a Greek immigrant, is bringing the tastes of home to the streets of Manhattan from his Souvlaki EGR food truck. You got five dollars in your pocket, you're gonna eat really good. In just six years, the designer food truck concept has grown from a handful to more than 4,000 rolling eateries around the country, according to a new study. Mitch Marcus is a regular. I'm in a hurry. It's cheap and generally good and a lot better than fast food. Researchers say this explosion in the popularity of food trucks is part of a larger trend they call the authenticity economy, the idea of favoring things that are unique and local. These new trucks use social media to tell customers where they'll be parked. They're not the, the classic um, street food. People call them roach coaches and things like that. Researcher Todd Schiefling analyzed Twitter data. He found the trucks are more common in cities with a lot of recent college graduates and where there are fewer fast food chains. This was all about a, a new aesthetic, looking for products that were distinct, unique, eclectic, artisanal, and not corporate or mass produced. Nothing corporate about a kitchen barely 18 feet by 10 feet and on wheels. Chris Van Cleve, CBS News, New York. Well, that study was presented at a meeting of the American Sociological Association. It also found the trucks are popular in cities where businesses, business rents are higher. A little bit of a dry sky going on for now across the region. Coming up in just a second, we'll show you why that isn't going to last very long. We're tracking rounds of showers and thunderstorms on Defender coming up. I'm Sam Smith in Fleming County, where the man police were looking for in connection to a murder here is finally caught. He was in court this afternoon. Coming up at 6, we'll bring you the latest on this case. Also coming up at 6, a Central Kentucky parent says a school board policy goes too far. More on the debate over the district policy that prohibits critical comments during school board meetings.